It's time now for the Kill the Can podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the KTC podcast. I am Chewy, and I'm uh, I'm happy that you're with me today. Do you want to quit nicotine and take back control of your life? We'll tell you how we've done it and answer the questions you didn't even know you had. And uh, today I'm being joined by a current Kill the Can admin on the forums and Discord. Yeah, he's known as Sammers on, on Discord. And, and I have to apologize. I completely butchered his name when I, uh, when I introduced him and I talked about his screen name. And I didn't even think to ask him um, during the podcast, I, you know, kind of how to pronounce it. But, but Sam Rob is an awesome um, a quitter. He's a good friend of mine. And I hope you enjoy this conversation. So yeah, I um, I'm joined today by the one and only Sam Rob, known on known on the forum as Sam Rs. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. How are you, Jay? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, uh, thank you very much for joining me today. You are uh, you're the first guest that I've had on the podcast. So I am uh, I'm truly honored to uh, to have you and to talk to you today. Oh, it's fantastic to be here. And uh, I'm not sure if you, you even realize this. Uh, today is my six-year anniversary. Oh, I didn't. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. That yeah, is it awesome. is. It, re- it really is. It, uh, it kind of crept up on me. I'm, I'm like, wait, I, I quit early in January and it was, yeah, it's the ninth. And oh my goodness, tomorrow is my, my six-year anniversary. So it's That's really, awesome. really kind of awesome. Well, well, congratulations. Well, so, so you, 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 you kind of, you stole my, no, you didn't steal my thunder. You, uh, you kind of <laughs> answered my, you answered my first question. My first question was going to be kind of, you know, when did you, when did you quit? Um, so when, when did you start? How long were you a dipper uh, after you quit six years ago? Oh, I started, I think I, it's, it's hard, to, hard to remember, uh, back in high school, probably 15, 16. Okay. Um, I ran track and of course, you know, you run, tr- when you run track, you don't smoke because that's not healthy for you. So everybody on the track team dipped and okay. uh, I kind of got it, got into that and, uh, off and on for a while. And then I'd say probably, you know, by the time I hit college, I'm like, yeah, no, this is, this is pretty, pretty, uh, you know, I'm an addict. It's every day. Got to have it. If I don't have it, I get irritable. Yeah. And uh, that went on for about 35 years. Wow. That's crazy. So, yeah. So I, so you were, you were on the track team. I was a swimmer. And so very, very similar quote unquote logic. Oh, you can't smoke so you can dip. Right. And so uh, (laughs) I won't say all of the swimmers dipped, but there was a whole slew of us that, that again, in our mind, we were, we were being healthy, right? We couldn't, couldn't so let's, you know, we'll get our nicotine fixed that way. So, um, okay. So you dip for 35 years. Wow. Um, what did you have a, did you have a particular poison that was your, that was your, your go-to your favorite, or were you like me where it was like you had one, but you would just kind of grab anything you could, could get your hands on if, if need be. If need be anything I can get my hands on. Um, yeah. although I was a, I was a Copenhagen long cut guy. Okay. Um, that was, that was my preferred and, uh, anything that was like that kind of, you know, not flavored long cut was, uh, was what I went for. Okay. Now I, I don't remember was, was cause I wasn't primarily a Cope guy. I would use it, but I was primarily Kodiak, uh, with stops along the way with like skull cherry, skull mint, you know, those kind of things was, was Copenhagen long cut, like always a thing or was that like later in the game? Like, wasn't I? I was always under the impression that Coke to me was like the super, super fine, like snuff, right? Was that was it, yeah. that what you started with, and then kind of graduated that's, to long cut? That's what I started with, and then then they introduced the long cut, which was oh man. I mean, especially for me, uh, I tried to I tried to hide it from my my friends, from my family, uh, especially from my wife. Right. The, the, the fine, fine stuff was like, ah, it gets everywhere. It goes up, yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so the long cut, when they came out with that, I was like, Oh man, this is great. It's clean. It's easy. Yeah. I don't leave, don't leave little flecks of, of tobacco all over the place. And, uh, which was really, I mean, was really important to me because I was, a uh, uh, uh what, what is it that we, that we call it? ninja? 
as a ninja, trying, okay. trying to be, trying to be I, a ninja dipper. So, I, so that was that's that's always an interesting question for me. Um, I was not a ninja. Now, what I will say is, I um, I went out of my way to not dip around my wife, but it wasn't like I was trying to hide it. You know what I mean? Like I was like she was she was well aware. So, I guess my question to you as a as a ninja. Were you successful at that? Did you did your wife oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know. I don't, if I was a ninja, I was the the uh, Clouseau of ninjas, right? My my wife absolutely knew that I wasn't putting over anything over on anybody. And I'll I'll say that to anybody that's listening, that's like, oh yeah, I'm so it's like, no, you're not. You no. know, <laughs> people know, know. people yeah. know. Um, if if nobody else, the uh, girl at your favorite convenience store yeah. knows. For um, sure. When I, when I quit, I actually I went to uh, went to we have a convenience store that was literally end of the road on the way to to and from work. I stop in there all the time, and uh, I walked in and I told the told the uh, the lady that that was usually there in the morning. Uh, she said, "Do you, you know?" Copenhagen, and I'm like, no, I quit. And she said, oh, really? I said, yeah, you have my permission. If I ask for, if I ask for a can of Copenhagen, you can come around the counter and kick me in the nuts. And wow. uh, she looked at me and she said, that's a deal. And yeah. uh, every time I went in after that, and I mean, it was it was probably a good month or two before I even dared to go back in. But after I'd, I'd go back in, she'd be like, you still quit? Still quit? So uh, I had a little bit of extra accountability outside of the forums and my wife and, and uh, some friends. So that's awesome. So, so she was, sounds like she was looking to give you a kick in the nuts then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe it was just a, maybe I represented all the customers in the sure. world there and just wanted the opportunity. Sure. <laughs> so, so when you, when you quit um, six years ago today, again, congratulations. That's awesome. Um, was that like your first attempt at quitting or were you like, I mean, I don't know about like for me, I mean, I tried quote unquote for years. Now, once oh. I like, once I got it, I was done. Right. But w was this your first attempt or had you kind of been building up to it for, for years? Building up to it for years. I would say probably a good 15 years worth of, okay, I'll quit after my birthday. I'll quit. Yeah. I'll quit, uh, you know, after school's out. I'll quit after, uh, you know, my daughter's birthday. Um, I'll quit after Christmas. And and uh, there were a couple of times that I, I made it a day or two. Okay. Um, but it was, I mean, we're we're talking, we're measuring quit in hours at the, at that point, right? right? I'd gone 36 hours, and uh, you know, I'm. You know, you know how it goes. Uh, anybody who's tried to quit nicotine, you get irritable, you get grouchy, you you uh, uh, you want your fix. Your brain is un unable to be happy without it. And uh, you know, every time it's it was just like, okay, no, this isn't working. I'm gonna go back. Gonna yeah. Go back. So so what what was it? Um, you know, I, I I talk a lot about my decision, my decision to quit dip, and for me it was. My son was 53 days old, my oldest son, and he was like laying on my chest and I just kind of broke into tears because I was like, oh my God, I'm actively doing something to take time away from this. Like, did, did you have a, did you have a moment, like a tipping point moment where you were like, okay, like I'm done. Did, did, was there, was there anything like that for you? I was, uh, well, we, we had, we had, a, there was, there was a series of events. We had a couple of things happen. Uh, one, we had a house fire in, uh, in 2014. Oh my God. So I, was at, I was at work and, uh, my wife called me and, uh, told me that, that the neighbor said our house was on fire. So, uh, I was on, I am in, in some messaging with my boss at work and I said, my house is on fire. got to go. Jumped in the car, came home, mentioned that there was a convenience store along the way. Yep. I did not have a can of Copenhagen. Okay. My house was burning down and I stopped to run into the convenience store to get a can of coke. Wow. That was now now in my defense, right? Sherry told me that uh the the uh nobody was in the house. 
the, everybody was out. Sure. All the animals were out. She'd thrown out all the animals out because it was the first nice day of the year. But uh, that's that hung with me for for a long time. And uh, I'd say probably about a year and a half later, uh, my birthday is beginning of, beginning of January. Uh, my birthday rolled around, and uh, a little bit a little bit after that, I was thinking just th for whatever reason it was weighing on me the thought of that and uh and uh i i'm like i need to quit i need to make i need to make the effort i need to do it for real this time and literally uh i woke up one morning think with this thought in my head that, that i need to do this and like i told you my my wife who i thought i was a ninja dipper she knew right she had she had never I'd, I'd say probably for about three years she had she had not she had said something to me once uh, I kind of dismissed it and then about three three years gone by and she sent me sent me a link to uh, a video on Facebook of a I can't even remember who it was but a fellow who had uh, lost part of his jaw to to uh, cancer okay and she she said I don't want this to be you and uh, I I said okay. You need to you need to help me. Let's find let's find something that I can do that will will help me quit. And I can't I can't honestly remember whether she found KTC or whether I found KTC, but uh, I, I logged into the forums, created an account. I said, okay, this this is it. I'm tired. I, I actually I I, <laughs> I remember my my first post was tired tired and done quitting day one. Um, okay. I uh, I was just I was done. I I'd, I'd hit the at the point where I'm like, no, I'm, I I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care what I go through. I don't want to be this person anymore. Sure. And, uh, I don't want my life to be controlled by a dead plane again. Okay. So that's uh that was that was the launching point, and uh, things got really I uh, really 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 strange at that point. Um. I never texted anybody in my life, but I had people talking about exchanging numbers for accountability. And what. here's the thing. Like I said, I'm never really texting anybody in my life. I had to when the house burned down. I yeah. had to text Sherry. I had to text the, the contractors when we were rebuilding. I had to text the, the uh, insurance adjuster. So I learned how to do that because the house burned down. So when it came time. I joined KTC, and people were like, "Yeah, you know, give me your number. I'll text you for accountability. We can text each other." Instead of being completely turned off, I was like, "Okay, yeah, I, I, I know how to do that." Which probably sounds weird because I'm a tech guy, but I, I hadn't had a smartphone up until that point. Okay, so okay, so I was gonna say, yeah, so so you're a your 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 background is in is in technology. So as of 2017 or or 2016, whenever this house fire was. Um, you really hadn't been using text it, no. it, that, that late in the game. Wow. Now, let me, I let me ask, it because if you're a tech guy and you have a text, if you can text or you have yeah. a pager or something, you're on call. So that's like, true. No, 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 no. I don't want this. So, so that's interesting. So, so as, so I get, let's, let's take a step back. Uh, we just kind of launched into the beginning of this conversation. So it, it, give us like the, 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 the 10,000 foot view of who Sam is. Like what, whatever, whatever you would like to share, kind of your background, your family, those those kind of things. Oh. Um, I don't have a whole lot of a whole lot of secrets, and I've tried tried not to, especially with uh, uh, over the last couple of years with uh, with respect to my involvement with KTC and quitting nicotine. I've tried mm -hmm. to. Um, I can't be a ninja quitter. Yeah, uh, I need need to be out there and let people know that it's it's possible. So I, I try to be encouraging. Uh, I don't go around talking about it, but, I, but I'm not shy about, about jumping in and, and talking with people about my experiences. Um, I teach Sunday school at our, our, in our church. So I've got first and second grade boys. Uh, I love it. I am probably because I'm on their intellectual level. Um, so uh, that, that's fantastic. I've got three, three girls uh, uh, adopted from China, all three of them. So uh the youngest is in her senior year at, at high school, so they're all all going to be uh, in college, and, and we're going to be empty nesters next year. Um, 
last couple of years, especially you mentioned I was a tech guy, I did a lot of startup stuff uh, here here uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, it was l- very much after uh, quitting nicotine that that a lot of changes came through with my in my life, and uh, a lot of them I think are, are directly related to to quitting. Um, one was uh, I ran my first couple of half half marathons, and I've never been a runner. I've always thought, oh man, I'm just big and fat and slow. And uh, as it turns out, nicotine really screws up your circulatory system and your 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 uh, whole energy levels and whatnot. And uh, uh, I found out when I quit that I I had a lot of nervous energy, so I started walking. Uh, and at first, it was like I'd walk you know a uh, half a mile, and then it got longer and then uh you know i got to the point where i was like okay the convenience store is, is off to the left i'm gonna walk off to the right for a mile <laughs> just to put myself out of the way um i got to, i got to the point where uh i was doing seven eight mile walks and a friend of mine said hey you, sh- you should think about the think about doing running the marathon so i i signed up to to run the half marathon and finished it which was unbelievable my that's my, awesome uh, my old track coach would have would have would have uh, been absolutely amazed. So, so, uh, so when you when you started uh, all of this walking, and, and again, I, I kind of see you on whether it's Facebook or social media or what have you. You know, you, you're always sharing your walks, which is which is awesome. It's very inspirational. I love seeing it. Um, I, did you did you did you lose any weight from from all of this additional movement, or or were you kind of always a, oh. always a slim guy? <clears throat> No, no, no. I was, I was, uh, when I quit, I was 240 pounds. Uh, when I started walking, I was up to like 255. Okay. Um, and, uh, over the course of probably about a year and a half or so, uh, I dropped around 40 pounds. That's awesome. Uh, I, yeah. I've, con- I've continued that trend. I'm down to, I'm, uh, I've been, I was down to 190 at one point. Um, you know, put a little bit, put, put some back on. So, but I have, tend to hover around 200 now, which for okay. me is amazing. It's, that's how, I yeah. feel sleek and slim. That's all. Now, are you, are you, um, are, so th- this is something that, that I struggle with big time. So, um, w- when I, when I graduated high school, um, again, I was a swimmer and I was shredded, right? So I was swimming like eight miles a day, eating whatever, I, like it didn't matter, right? So I mm-hmm. stopped swimming eight miles a day, go to college stop swimming, start drinking eight beers a day, you know, and then I also grew two inches. And so now, you know, 30, almost 30 years later, I'm like, two, I'm in that 260, 260 something range. And I probably need to be in that 190. You know what I mean? Like I'm, um, yeah. you know, so I've got 60, 70 pounds to lose. In addition to the walking, did you, did you change anything else? Did you change diet? Did you cut out drinking? Did any, anything like that? Um, Never, never really been a uh, a big drinker. Uh, never been a. I've never really been a big uh, pop drinker. I'm mostly, you know, unsweetened tea and and black coffee. So all the stuff that people are like, oh yeah, cut this out, and you'll lose weight. Like no, no. I, I'm already there, man. I'm still yeah. fat. <laughs> so uh, uh, I ended up actually uh, talking to a couple of friends and getting into uh, eating keto. And that's just been the last couple of years. Um, it's helped a lot. It really does. Uh, if nothing else, it helps me to keep track of what I'm eating and eat healthier. Um, and when I'm able to stick with it, when I, when I got down to, uh, to 190, that was after, after a month or two of, of eating keto. Um, okay. And if I if I'd continued... Uh, anybody who's anybody who's lost weight knows, you know, you kind of hit, you're you're at a point. It's hard to get past it, and then you get past it, and you drop down to to like the next level, and then you kind of hover there, and that's like your new set point. Um, my my goal is to get to if if I can get, I think uh, down to about 190 and stay there for a while. That could be my new metabolic set point. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, keto definitely. The walking's great. The walking helps a lot, especially with the cardiovascular health. Um, my my grandfather and my my father both had heart attacks when they were younger. Um, I'm really excited. I've, I've, I'm past the point of of uh, when when my dad had his first heart attack. So 
Uh, I'm doing better than that. And awesome. uh, that, that makes me happy. Um, but uh, yeah, the diet and the exercise, yeah, their, their life changes. And once in all honesty, right. Once you make a big life change, like quitting. And I kept finding myself thinking like this. I'm like, Oh man, I quit. I quit nicotine. I can walk every day. Yeah. Like, oh man, I quit nicotine. I can watch what I eat. That's nothing compared to, you know, walking into a convenience store and staring down a wall of, you know, lip death. Right. Right. Um, bunch of, uh, there are a bunch of other things that, uh, you know, I've, I've gone at with the same attitude. You know, I've started, uh, last couple of years, started doing some writing, fiction writing. And uh, a lot, big part of that is I remind myself, I'm like, you know, you quit, you quit nicotine, man. You can do pretty much just about anything you can do you want. So, so t- talk to me a minute about, like about your quit was like, once you kind of made your decision and started down that path, um, like, was it easy for you? Was it, was it, was it nail, you know, nail biting? Like what was, what was your experience? You know, the first, you know, the first month, the first couple, couple months, was it, you know, I mean, you've been quit now six years. Um, you know, I, I would imagine if you're like me, you're pro- I want to say, I won't say cruise control, but you're, you're probably like, you've got a really good base and you probably don't think about dip anymore. You know, those kind of things. What, what, what have you done to get to six years to kind of the point where you're good, right? You, you've kind of, you're beating it. Um, uh, first, first thing is, uh, uh, I would say having the attitude that I haven't beat it mm-hmm. and being, being on the forums, uh, being on the discord at KTC posting, uh, every day that uh, my promise that I'm going to stay quit. Um, I make that promise to a bunch of, bunch of friends as well, not just from the fo- forums, but outside. Um, I like to, I like to, uh, try and send out a dad joke with all my, with, uh, with my reminders to people. Uh, you've been, you've been on the receiving end of a lot of those. Yep. Um, so that, that's the the first thing is is to to admit that no, I don't have it beat. I may be winning, but I I don't have it beaten. I never will, because I'm an addict. Sure. Um, I am I am, yeah. You know, I guess at this point, you know, you you say five bucks in a bad decision. It's probably like ten bucks in a bad decision <laughs> right, right. now. Right. Inflation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, away from from going back to to being an addict, and I don't want to do that. Um, my first, the first couple of months for me were, were nuts. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a very social person or I wasn't at that point. I've, I've managed to come out of my shell a lot. So interacting on the forums was very different for me. Um, there's obviously when you get a bunch of, bunch of people that are trying to quit together, different personalities all over the country, lots of drama would come up and people storming out and storming in and yeah, which is, yeah, social, social media in a nutshell. Um, So there was all that going on, which was fantastic. In Mm -hmm. all honesty, I could get, I was already angry. I was, (laughs) my brain was screaming at me because I wanted Nick to there. I, I, I had something to be angry about this dork on the forums was was saying, you know, he used the wrong word. I can't believe that. You know, <laughs> I right. could go off on that. Um, it was, uh, so, I mean, it, for, for about three months, it was a lot of anger, uh, a lot of, a lot of nervous energy. Uh, like, like I said, uh, started walking. Um, there's one point where I was coming home and it was a bad day. And I, I literally came, came to a stop sign and the stop sign torqued me off. I don't know what it did. I don't know why. I rolled down the window and I screamed at the stop. I'm glad nobody was around because I'm, I'm telling the stop sign that it's stupid and it's an idiot stop sign and it should just fall over and die and rust. And so, I, I mean, that was probably the worst. <laughs> yeah. um, there was uh, the, other, the other thing for me in particular, um, as a software guy, I may, you know, you sit at the desk, do a lot of work in my head. Um, I went to, you know, went, once I, once I got in about a week in, um, reading up on the symptoms, you know, what you can expect as you quit, which was fantastic for me, by the way, the, all the, all the information on the KTC site and on the forums about, uh, what you're going to go through really was awesome to me because it told me like, when it, when it said that you're going to have brain fog and I, and I started finding it hard to think, I was like, 
okay, good. I'm doing this right. I've got yeah. the right symptoms. But I, I, I had to go to my boss. I said, listen, I might not be good for a while because I'm quitting nicotine. And this is one of the things that's really hard for me to concentrate. I'm really easily distracted. He said, oh, okay, I take your time, however long it takes. And I, I owe Dan a tremendous amount of, of thanks for, for that being that encouraging uh, because it took like three months for me to work through that and wow. get to the point okay. where I was like, okay, I can focus again. Some people, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. But uh, for me, that was the primary, you know, I would get irritable, I would get frustrated, but uh, mostly it was because I just couldn't think. It was, yeah. it was, it was rough. You know, it's, it's, it's funny you say that. I, I think there's, there's a lot of people that when they quit, they, I think they're almost expecting the first couple days to be really terrible. And then when they get through that, they're like, well, why, why am I not healed yet? Right. And what they don't understand oh, yeah. is, you know, that, that there's, there's different, um, there's differences kind of as you go through this journey. Yeah. The first three or four or five days are, are terrible, but you've got a lot, your brain takes a while to kind of rewire itself. And, and, and to your point, kind of get back to being able to do these things, um, not even in a normal sense, right? Because it really is a new normal. You're, you, you know, yeah. for me, I mean, there, there were things that I had literally never done in my life without a dip in. Drive a car, cut the grass, you know, like yeah. these kind of things, right? And so it, it took me a long time to be able to even just to get in the car and not pop a dip in, right? Um, it, it does. It takes a while. Yeah, I... I didn't even think of it, but yeah, you're right. I, there, there's never a time where I, where I was driving that I did not dip. Right. Uh, there's uh, moving moving out to where we live now. Uh, we had a fireplace for the first time, and uh, I'd never split wood without a dip, without a dip as a reward at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it, it really it really is when you start start thinking about it, and and some people talk about it, almost like a sense of loss, like you've you've lost a friend. Right. I right. used to do everything with it, with this guy. And uh, it can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I, I want to be cognizant of your time here. I got I got a couple of the things that I wanted to run by or ask you. So so earlier in the conversation and and keep in mind, I can edit out. I can take anything out if you want me to. So so speak freely. And then after the fact, let me know. Hey, delete that. Um, so, so you mentioned, you mentioned you have three daughters. Um, I have three boys, but so I, so I don't know the, the, the female, uh, side of things, but I understand being outnumbered, right. When it comes to, you know, three versus two parents. And you also mentioned that they are adopted. Um, I'm adopted as well. And I, and I think I've shared with you, I actually, um, I, I actually met up or I, I didn't meet. Um, I contacted my birth mother, um, th this year for the first time. So I'm, uh, I'm 46. So I, I sent her a Christmas card for my first time in my life this year, um, which was an interesting experience. Um, I just, I, I, like, what can you, do you have any thoughts on just kind of like adoption in general and, and, and your, your experience with that and, and, and what, what that has been like for you guys and your family? Um, it is both awesome and a trial which actually is a description of what it's like to raise kids period. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're talking uh, by birth, by adoption, foster kids. Uh, everyone's different. Uh, all three of my daughters have dramatically different personalities. Uh, you know, we've, we've got, we run the gamut. Um, my oldest has uh, some, some mental health issues that she, she deals with. Uh, she's doing really well. But uh, awesome. that's, you know, that's, that's one of those things that's like, you know, it happens. Yeah. It, it's it, just it, life, right? Yeah. It's just life. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're talking about your wife or your, your biological children or your adopted children or, or you know, foster children, um, their family, you've made a commitment to, to love them and, uh, and to care for them and nothing changes that. That's nothing tremendous. changes that. That's tremendous. So, if, if anybody's thinking about adoption, absolutely encourage you to talk, talk to an adoption lawyer, talk to some families that have been through it. Uh, it's a fantastic experience. It's, a, it's an amazing trip. And, and uh, same thing for anybody. We've got a bunch of folks at the, our church that are foster parents. And uh, my, my mother actually was, uh, was a foster child. 
and uh, oh, okay. she was taken in by by uh, some friends when her parents died, and uh, it's a it's a fantastic fantastic thing. Families are where you find them. Not not it doesn't have anything. To, sometimes it has things to do with blood, but uh, most where you find them yeah no I, I agree and, and yeah and, and like I said as, as, and being being an adoptee uh, my brother is also an adoptee we are not biological but um, he is he's my family right and I, I agree I agree with you what you said wholeheartedly like family is what you make of it and where you find it so I, I couldn't agree more um, so I, I got one other you know as I'm prepping for this podcast I got one other thing that I wanted to ask you about so you ran for president of the United States. <laughs> and, oh, and I thought I was going to make it through, through this. <laughs> and, and, and for those of you that don't know, I'm not joking. Sam ran legit, like a legit campaign as a libertarian for the president of the United States. Um, I voted for you as, you know, or I would have voted for you. I, di I didn't get the opportunity to. What, what, can you, what can you tell me about that, just kind of that experience in general? Like what led you to that and... And and how how was that? I, I really we could probably have hours and hours on just this topic, but what oh, what can yeah. you tell me about that? Uh, well, uh, in my defense, I was left unsupervised, so uh, I no I like I like to tell people um, I was working for my my oldest daughter filling out a FAFSA form, and for those of you who have college age students, you know what uh, FAFSA is, and uh, it is a horrible pain in the butt, and. Uh, at one point, I said it's probably easier to run for president, and I thought I should look this up. I should check this out. Turns out it is. Turns yeah. out it really is. Uh, so what started as a kind of a lark became actually became something fairly serious uh, once I realized that in uh, I've been a, I've been a libertarian for a while, but once I realized that there was a uh, particularly in the Libertarian Party, there weren't, weren't a whole lot of pro-life voices. I'm, I'm, a, I'm pro adoption, pro-life. Uh, for those of, you, those of you who are thinking, oh yeah, once the baby's born, you, know, you don't care. Um, I'm involved with an organization here uh, in, in uh, Pennsylvania called Tri-Life and uh, we support children and families up to the age of three. Um, so that's, you know, when we say we're pro-life, we're, we're not just, you know, pro preborn. we're pro, family we're pro we've we've got uh parent programs we've got uh father programs we've got uh and when we say we support children up to the age of three as long as our clients have children under the age of three we support them so we've got client clients who've been with us for years um but i, I said yeah we there needs to be a pro-life voice in the libertarian party um ended up uh running running for president did not get the nomination but uh, got to travel and meet some absolutely amazing people. Uh, you would not be, you would, you would, couldn't even understand how, how awesome some of these people I met. Uh, Ken, I'll, I'll call out the Ken Armstrong and uh, Don Armstrong. Uh, they, Ken was a, is a former uh, ambassador, I believe if I'm getting this correct, uh, Coast Guard guy. Uh, he served in the White House before he was, he was running and, uh, uh, he, he was actually running against me, competing for the nomination. And uh, there was one event that I was not able to get out to, but I sent out some literature to. And uh, uh, Ken's wife, Dawn, who is an amazing, wonderful lady, uh, had met Sherry and I before at another event. And uh, she said they, they had a table set up for me and my literature out on there. And uh, some people were just using it as a place to put their drinks. And Dawn said... I'm not, I'm not going to let that happen. Sam's a nice guy. So she went over and one of my, the wife of one of the people that I was competing with for the presidential nomination went over and ran my table and answered questions about me. And where, where awesome. are you going to find that? Where are you going to find that? And the, the whole, the whole event was the whole situation there was, was like that. I made some amazing friends, uh, got to know some absolutely wonderful people, uh, ended up working, uh, currently working with an organization called uh, People for Liberty with Joe Jorgensen, who ended up being the uh, the uh, the candidate for president in 2020, along with uh, Spike Cohen as our as our VP uh, running mate, and uh, still a, on good terms with a ton of people. Um, there's there's was heartache. I mean, there, there's there's been people are people. You know, yeah, where libertarians aren't immune. We we have our infighting and whatnot, but uh, actually, 
just getting in touch with people who want to make a difference in their communities and uh, you know in their in their in their states uh, has been fantastic. It's, it really is unbelievable. Um, awesome. Would I recommend it to anybody? It was kind of <laughs> like being thrown off the deep end of a pool into a shark infested waters. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're. I mean. I know you're involved in po local politics as well. So. I am, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm an elected official. I'm on, on my town's city council. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, but I, I can't even fathom, j just based on the stuff that I deal with in a town of seventeen thousand people, I can't even fathom what you deal with at the at the national level and and those kind of things. So so twenty twenty four is right around the corner. Are you going to make another run at it? Oh, my wife would kill me. She absolutely would. No, it, and, and I don't. I don't think so. It was fun. It was a great introduction. Um, I got involved in state politics for a while. Uh, I was the, the vice chair for the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania, Western Vice Chair, uh, for a couple, a year and a half or so. Um, like I said, I'm involved with People for Liberty. I've gotten involved with the uh, and, and helped organize the Pro Life Libertarian Caucus. Uh, I'm involved with uh, an organization called the Classical Liberal Caucus now, and. Uh, all fantastic people and really the what i like about it is uh the the people that i that i find myself uh really working closely with are the ones who want to see uh concrete changes made uh you you've got the usual pie in the pie in the sky oh let's let's abolish the irs uh but then you've got places like the tax policy institute that are doing a great job of uh chipping away at that mountain yeah, instead yeah. of instead of dynamiting it in, in one fell swoop, um, you know, places places and uh, and you know municipalities and states where there are you know people are introducing new legislation. That's one of the things that we try and track and support at People for Liberty is uh, you know hey here's some here's some marijuana decriminalization. And uh, I mentioned teaching Sunday school. I'm a Baptist. You know, I go to a Baptist church. When you, when you've got Baptist church members who are talking about you know. Why, why is marijuana still illegal, right? You know you've lost that battle. Right, So, yeah. uh, um, you know, people working working on that, people working on occupation, you know, reeling back in occupational licensing, uh, working on voter reforms. You know, there's a ton of wonderful people doing some really incredible things and I'm really glad to be be associated with them these days. That's, that's awesome. Well, you know, it, you know to, kind of, to kind of bring it back to quitting, it's, you know, it's like, it's kind of the, that one day at a time mentality, right? You can't quit all at once. And, yeah. you know, you, you can't make these, these big, big kind of big life changes, whether it's to a political party or your body or what have you, all at once. It's, it's kind of oh, no. little, little incremental steps um, that, that, uh, that where you really kind of see that progress over time. Yep, absolutely. Okay. What, um, w one more question here, and then I'll let you go. Did, um, did you or do you use any fake dip, any nicotine-free or tobacco-free products, at, you know, once, since you're quit? Um, recently, no, not, I think it's been a couple of years, uh, but the, I'd say like the first year, year and a half, I, I actually really like got into it. I did tried you? all the different fake dips. I'd order, order this, I'd, I'd get that, I'd get that. Uh, I really like the the uh, cowboy coffee too, which is okay. kind of like a mix of coffee and honey and uh, and creamer. Um, there was uh, you know Smoky Mountain was it was a good go to, um, easily available. You can you can find it all over the place in stores now, which is really kind of cool. I like yeah. That. Um, there's uh yeah, but there there are a bunch of other things. There there'd be uh, companies that would have like oh yeah we've we've got our 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 fake dip and uh, seven different flavors and a trial pack. And I, I'd be like, Oh, oh yeah, I'll order, order yeah. that. And then I could, could just play with it and try it all. I tried to make it a game, you know, something that I could experiment with and enjoy and, and comment on, on the forums. I tried this and it, you know, it didn't like yeah. it. But it was, it was, it was uh, absolutely a help when you're talking about breaking the, the physical addiction um their habits that you have. And I, I've commented to people that, that uh, you can have these habit, the habit of feeding your addiction uh, and breaking those habits uh, can be as hard as dealing with the addiction itself. So just having something in my lip all the time, 
you know, when it was in the car, whether I was, you know, whatever was going on, um, the fake really helped with that. And it let me separate things so that I could, I could deal with, deal with the addiction and get to the point where I was stable and, and confident that, okay, I, you know, I, I, not that I've got this beat, but I can handle it day to day, like you said. And then, uh, then I could work on, okay, now let's get this stuff out of my lid. Let's get, sure. the, let's break, let's break the habits now that, now that we have some time to do that. Sure. Um, all right. And then, uh, so I, I, I guess I, on, on this note, I will, I will let you go again. I wanted to be cognizant of your time. Do, do you have any kind of parting words for quitters out there, whether they're new quitters, struggling to make that decision? Any, uh, any parting words from the one and only Sam R's? <laughs> um, do it. Yeah, it is absolutely worth it. It is hard. It was probably the hardest thing I've done in my life. Um, and uh, it is absolutely worth it. It is worth your time. It is worth your effort. And it is worth your life and your freedom. Awesome. Uh, Sam, I cannot tell you how honored I am that you joined me today. Um, thank you not only for joining me today, but for all your work as an admin on the forums and on Discord and behind the scenes with the tech stuff. Um, you, you have helped an, an innumerable amount of quitters out there, and you really have been an integral part of my quit for these last six years as well. And congratulations on your, uh, your quit anniversary. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be quit with you. Thank you, man. Honored to be quit with you too. All right. Thanks, brother. Join us again next time for another edition of the Kill the Can podcast.